Whoa, let's go. The top five CNC lies shop owners tell themselves. Wait till you hear the fifth one. It's actually my favorite one coming up. All right, number one. I can't afford automation. This is one of the biggest ones right here, Absolutely. right? Especially where we are in time right now. Automation could not be more important. 100%, you can't afford not to do automation because again, what's the hardest thing we have? We can't find guys like this. We can't find Jesse's and Barry's and Titans out there. You gotta automate to be profitable. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be like a multi-million dollar system. Even the simple pallet changer like this one or a bar feeder, it'll help you turn wasted hours into profit while you sleep. Even and something as simple as a chip fan. You think about it, like any time that you go home at night and you're, you leave your machine sitting idle, that's money you're leaving on the table. 100%. You can't call. think of automation as just an expense. You got to think of it as like the best employee you'll ever hire. Absolutely. If you do do right. more with less. Right. I think automation starts with just basic efficiency. Looking at your program, seeing how efficient you can get, making every single tool run as their optimal. As you guys mentioned, throwing in a chip fan so you don't actually have to open the door. As you get more efficient, you're just constantly designing and figuring out how to actually get more parts done in less time with less people so you can have more machines and your people can be paid more. Spindle utilization, right? Get the spindle up. You gotta keep that thing running. That's what makes money. The second CNC lie that machine shop owners will tell themselves is, I need to have a huge shop to compete. Where you actually can compete is on a lower level of overhead. If you have three, four machines, that's not a big shop, but man, think of the guy that's got 30, 40 machines and that overhead that he's got for employees, labor costs, everything that goes into that, that's and where- And it gets slow. Oh my God, yeah. When things are great, things are great and you can pay for all those machines and stuff, but as soon as they slow down, then you start losing stuff. And how many times in our trade do we see that? It's either feast or famine, yeah. you know? So yeah. you gotta yeah. prepare for that. And then one of the owners I used to work for, he used to say that the biggest reason why machine shops go out out of business is because they grow too fast. That's right. So exactly. yeah, you can really get yourself in trouble. You be careful how quick you grow. Exactly. That's why the little guy, that guy that has that three more machine shop and just kind of grows at a slow pace, he's got the ability to compete on that level because he doesn't have all that overhead. Like you said, it's spindle utilization. Yep. Like why buy more machines when you're leaving all this capacity on your the machines that you currently, yep. currently have? Yep. Only buy new machines if you just completely run out of capacity with what you got. Yeah, so I, I rarely see a, a machine shop that's trying running more than 30% capacity. Always. Like the, these guys always have open machine time and yet they're looking for new machines, but they're not keeping the machinists accountable, right? You can be equally successful for your family by having three machines or four machines and figuring out a niche in the market where you do something that other people don't do well and you perfect it, then they will only come to you and keep you nice and 100%. busy. Nice and busy, yeah. You yeah, can, you can make incredible money. Yeah. Quality and on time. Bill Selway always used to tell me, you go quality and on time, you'll never be out of work. And that's how it was. It's basically the name of the game right there. We all start somewhere, right? You all exactly. start as a small shop and it's how you grow and how you treat treat those vendors. I think I think already, like we're going into three, but it's like, it's like instead of talking negative, what can we do? Let's yeah. have a mindset to talk positive, totally to, to have vision, to go after greatness and not be telling ourselves lies that would hold us back. 100% right? agreed. Number three is is a great one. Small parts can't make big money. And right there, that is a lie. That, it, it is a lie. Crazy. Think about bar feeders where you just have bar after bar and, and parts are just dropping, dropping, dropping. Money is just dropping and like that's how you make money. But to that point, small parts, think about how many small parts you've seen and the complexity that are in some of those small parts. And sometimes they don't even have to be that complicated to make money. I mean, we had jobs at my dad's shop that were basically just a washer and we made a ton of money on them. Yeah, probably through volume, right? Yep, I mean, that's a lot of the small parts, that's where you get your volume at, you know. Walk into any medical shop and see if, if there's any money, you know, floating around like. If there wasn't money to be made in tiny parts, then we wouldn't have any Swiss machines in the United Good calls. States. Yeah. Guy came in, did a demo on an X7, he's making the little fidget spinners. He can't make enough of these darn things. Bought an X7, he's like, I'm done sending this stuff out, I'm doing it inside. Yeah, super good. Why not? And if you, and I tell everybody, even if you're not buying a machine, you just want to talk to the best in the industry and just talk shop, Love Keith it. at titansofcnc.com. 
text him or text, and he'll Anytime. he'll either talk to you or put you with one of our other guys. Yep. And uh, we are here to partner with you and help you guys rise to greatness. All right, number four will actually affect a lot of people out there. Used machines can't compete. Another lie. There's so many different machine tool companies out there. And, and again, it's levels to the game. Even the cheapest machines I've seen run for 20, 30 years. I had a Haas one time and the machine wasn't a great machine, but I started running a bunch of carbon fiber and G10 and composite. So I started taking on all of this work. I got the right tools for the work and I made it. This machine is just gonna run composites. And that machine being super old and super grungy made a ton of money because it made the parts that nobody else wanted to make. Absolutely. Sometimes you get jobs that don't have a ton of tolerance. You got an old machine sitting in the corner, throw it on that darn thing, right? It's sitting there. It's there to make money. Yeah, we've used machines in the past where it's just like, you know, old machine, whatever, we use it for roughing. Yeah, rough, yeah. good call. Roughing out everything, then we throw it on the newer machines to finish. Yep, absolutely. 100%. Open First half sitting up, open tolerance. Yeah. Everything Barry makes is open tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. No. Nah. Fact whatever. is, if, if it makes accurate parts and it makes you money, then you should use it. Absolutely. All right, number five, my favorite right here. There's no money in CNC machining, and that is an absolute lie. If you have talent, if you actually have a, the mindset, if you're willing to put the work in, being in this trade can not only change your life, it can change your family's life and all of your employees' life, and you can do incredible things with this trade. I literally just read an article, there's 600,000 open jobs in manufacturing right now and they are paying great money because we can't find the people. So to learn how you can run machines, to learn how you can program, the more you learn in this industry, the more money you're gonna make. You guys all started as getting in front of the machine, operating the machine, understanding what the machine background is, but as you grow, salary group. Yeah, and that's something that I think a lot of young people don't think about today, is they'll go out and get a job for like 20 bucks an hour at a gas station. But they don't realize that, yeah, in machining you might start at, you know, 18 bucks an hour. Yeah. But after a year, you'll be making, you know, $25, $30 an hour yep. if you challenge yourself to learn and get better. At and, and work at the right place. Right, and go, go to places, shop. not just a sweatshop. It, it's not one of the dirty, grimy places. It's a place with vision because you go in there and interview the owner, just like the owner interviews you to make sure that this place is worthy of you because you're gonna come in there and be a pillar and work your ass off and help them get to the top level. Well, and we just had our inspection training, right? We had 50 people here at the shop. I talked to half a dozen of them over here just to better themselves, learn more about the industry, broaden their knowledge in manufacturing. Sometimes it is just growing with the right customer yeah. too. Those, right, we don't all get the holy grail right out of the gate, but you get this customer that you're doing a lot of work for, holy smokes, how many times have you grown with a customer and yeah. had that guy go from uh, giving you $100,000 in PO in, in a year to a million? I mean, that's a lot of... And, and be there through the tough times. Like 100%. You are a family. Yep. Don't be like, oh, I'm not getting paid for this. Oh, that wasn't part of my contract. Whatever it takes, if you gotta wake up at two in the morning, go down to the shop, grab parts, and drive them eight hours down to the next town, go do it, because that's legendary status. That's where companies talk about their vendors and who they wanna support and grow with. And uh, that's one thing that we took advantage. I was willing to do absolutely what it takes. No matter what it was, we were gonna get it done. I didn't run away from my mistakes. I didn't run away from scrap parts. We, we talked about it, we worked it out with the customers. We worked through the weekends, we fixed the problems, and we built lifelong relationships, which has led to us being able to have a Customer channel service. and be qualified to speak to you guys. Absolutely. It's sometimes one of those key components that they are waiting for those parts for maybe an assembly, for maybe something that's gotta be shipped on their end. Doing that and taking care of your customer. Love it. One of, one of the things that I'll say, this guy, I thought I had the best job in the world, but this guy has the best job in the world because he gets to talk to all of these guys that have been watching us on camera for a decade or more. And they have these incredible stories, how they learn machining from us and how 
Now they're starting their own companies. They right. made their own product. They made their own this. And these young guys are successful oh, and they're, they're getting after it. It is so crazy. I've sold these machines to guys that are, you know, following our platform, our curriculum. They're 16, 18, 20, 22, 25 years old, putting a machine inside. They've got a product or an idea for a product and they want to build it out themselves. Yeah, why not? Crazy. Yeah. Throw out the negativity, throw out the lies. That's not what you're about. You're about rising to greatness. You're about vision. You're about your family. You're about doing something that's never been done before. So go do it. Everyone can discount you. They can talk about you, but they're not you. And they don't understand that you were created for a purpose to go after absolute greatness. There is a reason that you're on this earth. So find that reason, find that purpose, go get it. And stop listening to everybody else. Go to greatness. Make Boom. That's what it's about. Yes, sir. Boom. Hit it. Love you guys, man. So good. So Boom. Good.